Danny Banfield and Teresa Emberley have been together for the better part of 20 years. They've built a nice life together. They enjoy each other's company and the company of others. And we were both very social people, so I mean, we just hung out with friends and, you know, spent time with family and my kids and, and whoever else wanted to spend time with us. <laughs> so. I'm, I'm videotaping Teresa in the Venice. <laughs> Show me how excited you are. You, you. Yeah. <laughs> Our wedding was not only the most beautiful one I've ever been to, but the most beautiful one I can imagine. We got married in our boathouse on Indian Harbor on Montespee Cove. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I love that we were there for the ceremony rather than it being a blur to us. Love was radiating from us. We were so tender. Touching your heart with my hand. I can't read it. <laughs> I love you. Life together started simply. We had a boathouse in Indian Harbor, and Teresa had a studio upstairs in the boathouse, and uh, I had my uh, music studio downstairs in the boathouse, so we'd spend a lot of time in the studio working on our arts. And Teresa, again, was an artist at the time, so even though she was, uh, she had a day job, so to speak, you know, working in the, at, at, at the St. Mary's, uh, she was also an artist on the side, so we used to do a lot of art shows. Uh, the cliffs themselves are various layers that have to dry because it's all in oil. Teresa got her master's in counseling and went on to be a counselor at both St. Mary's and Dalhousie universities. She then became a legal support advocate for the Avalon Sexual Assault Center. A few years ago, Danny started to notice Teresa was behaving differently. So there was a lot of um, just, uh, you know, confusion, um, communication problems. Um, a little bit of, uh, um, I don't know how to put it, like a self-centered behavior, like things being about Teresa if they were not about Teresa, you know, kind of thing, just because that's what happens, right? You, you're, you become more, you know, it becomes more about you, right? Because that's, it's all internal. Danny didn't know why Teresa was acting so out of character. At first, just not knowing, and there was, I felt a lot of anger. I feel guilty about it to this day that uh, I felt, you know, not knowing that something was wrong. I felt that it was just, uh, you know, she uh, wasn't communicating well with me, you know. That our communication wasn't working, it was breaking down. Um, uh, so, the, yeah, that was my initial reaction. It was really hard for a long time, you know, kind of thing. I felt my marriage was falling apart. Teresa's sitter, sister, uh, um, Betty, Teresa's best friends, Michelle and Kelly, sent me an email a number of years ago. Dan, something's going on with Teresa. We should see if we can set up an appointment to get her checked out. At that appointment, Danny and Teresa heard the word that would change their world. And uh, myself and uh, her sisters, Betty and Jeanette, and Teresa all went to meet with the psychologist, and what the psychologist said was, I'm going to say a very scary word, but it's a ge general term, and that word is dementia. Right? So that was where it started, dementia. The dementia would later be diagnosed as early-onset Alzheimer's disease. Teresa was just 50 years old. Yeah, the reaction was really, wow, yeah, I guess something is going on, you know. You do, you get that realization that, geez, you've been wrong all this time, yeah, you know, there's something desperately wrong, right? Yeah, 
shock. It took a while to, yeah. There's so many different kinds of Alzheimer's and so on and so forth and what they attack and the areas of the brain that they attack. And with Teresa, she's still doing reasonably well in the spatial aspect of things, right? And uh, tasks may have to be simplified, but if they are, she's very capable. There's a lot of things that she doesn't do any longer. We're trying to get her back into painting, which in the last couple of weeks, actually, we've made a few inroads in that regard because she hasn't felt capable of, of doing her art, which is, that's a big thing. Anything to do with money is difficult for her. She can still use her debit card, but uh, money matters confuse her. But she can still cook because she can put stuff in a pan and turn on the oven and, and cook, you know, simple things, right? You know, kind of things. So we prepackage everything or buy frozen things that she can use. We don't buy as much fresh produce as we used to because it requires chopping up and prepping and so on and so forth, right? Kind of things. So, so I always used to joke with her, right? Cooking with Teresa. I'd say, oh, so how much of that would you put in there, Teresa? And she's like, I don't freaking know. I just put some in, right? <laughs> but she was like one of those experimental cooks, right? You know, kind of thing of uh, uh, where she would look to see what we have and put something together and boom, right? And it always worked out. She was a good cook. As Danny assumed the role of caregiver, he began to look for help. His first stop was Teresa's sister, Betty. Betty has recently retired after a career as a psychiatric nurse. Betty is the, uh, is, uh, well, Betty's everything to, to us in terms of uh, the care of Teresa. She's the, uh, she's the, uh, the uh, you know, the master of ceremonies. Um, knows everything about every drug, every process, the, uh, the whole system. She's in constant contact with Teresa. She gets upset with Dan when he takes control. She said he's really bossy. And then I said, but I'm bossy too. And she says, yeah, you're better at it. Danny leans on Betty for direction with Teresa's care. I mean, I listen to him. If there's a, an issue, I maybe make suggestions. I don't know if he wants them or not, but I'm going to make them anyway. Um, I spend time with Teresa. I'll send him texts and ask him, did she take her meds? It's much better if you just look to see if she's taken her meds, that type of thing, instead of asking, because that's almost questioning a person's abilities. The big goal is having a routine, consistency, and calmness. I mean, it, like when things are all going well, Teresa does well. My sanctuary is music, you know? And friends, friends, music and friends. Yep. No man is an island, and uh, I'm a real believer that you have to re uh, rely on people to get you through things, right? So the open mic is, again, it's just, uh, for me, it's a release, it's a vent, it's a creative outlet, it's a friendship outlet, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's all of the above. Danny has hosted an open mic for the past five years. The venue has changed a few times, but the people have always followed. Again, just, you know, given what we're going through and whatnot kind of thing, it's, I guess it's even more important to me because of that, right? You know, it would be important to me if this wasn't going on, but uh, with this going on, that collection of friends, based on something as simple as, as music, is a wonderful thing, right? You know, it's, uh, uh, it's essential to me now, right? Just turn around and you, you will see. Well, I will catch you, I will catch your fall, baby. Have a little faith in me. Have a little faith in me. Man, I, I just, <laughs> it's my favorite night of the week. <laughs> My 
hopes is that she, uh, they come up with a miraculous cure tomorrow. My expectations are entirely different. The prognosis is not good. Uh, early onset Alzheimer's has been explained to us and without any uh, you know, misunderstanding that it is a terminal disease. Um, we're hoping they're wrong and uh, uh, that it will proceed differently. We have no way of knowing if that's, you know, just sort of <laughs> misplaced hope or whatever, but you can't stop hoping, right? You know, it's the only thing that you can get by. And I'm not going to live today because I think Teresa's dying. <laughs> There's no way. Right? I'm going to live today like Teresa is living and that we have tomorrow and then we have next week and we have next month and, and hopefully years. And that's the way I'm trying to live it. I, I, I try to call her, you know, on a semi-regular basis through the course of a day, right? You know, kind of thing, a couple times a day or whatever. And I call her up and I say, so how are you doing? She'll say, yep. How's your, day? How's your morning? What were you doing this morning? She'll say, yep. Right? Or I don't know. Or whatever. And that's our conversations. Well, you know. If that's what it is, that's what it is. But it is what I miss most about Teresa. It's just talking to her. Mm -hmm. That's the history of us, but right there. Yeah. Pretty cool history. We yeah. were talking about it after you left. We were, we were yeah. saying to each other just how, mm. like it's coming up, we'll be together soon. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> 17 years in October. I know. I love her. Yeah. And it's been a wild ride, buddy. I love you. Yeah.